For generations, Jamaica has been a paradox, an island famous for its lush green mountains and vibrant flowing rivers. It's a jewel of the Caribbean, a place synonymous with abundance. And yet, for millions of its people, the simple act of turning on a tap has always been a gamble. A daily question of if water will flow, not when. This is a story of scarcity in a land of plenty, a crisis born from a tough combination of geography, aging infrastructure, and the relentless pressure of a changing climate. But what if you could defy that geography? What if you could redraw the map of water itself, carving new rivers of steel right through the island's formidable mountain ranges? This is the story of that what if. Jamaica is betting hundreds of millions of dollars on a series of audacious pipeline projects. These aren't just repairs or simple upgrades. We're talking about a radical overhaul of the nation's entire circulatory system. It's a high-stakes engineering mission designed to finally conquer a generations-old crisis. So this isn't just a story about infrastructure. It's about a nation's fight for its future, and how that fight isn't just delivering water, but also redrawing the island's very map of power, wealth, and opportunity forever. To get just how ambitious this is, you first have to understand the sheer depth of the problem. The island's water crisis is a complex beast, part geography, part history, and part brutal economics. First, you've got the geographical paradox. Jamaica's mountainous interior is a magnificent rain magnet. It catches the clouds, triggering rainfall that feeds its famous rivers. But those same mountains make it incredibly difficult and expensive to get that water from where it falls to where it's needed most, in the crowded cities, the booming tourist resorts, and remote farming communities. For decades, the water has been tantalizingly close, yet logistically, worlds away. Then, there's the ghost of the past, the island's aging infrastructure. Much of the water network is a relic of another era, a sprawling web of pipes that have been decaying for decades. The result is a problem the industry calls non-revenue water. It's a clean term for a catastrophic problem. Historically, at its worst, figures suggest that as much as 71% of the water pumped into the system was lost before it ever reached a paying customer. Think about that. For every 10 gallons of precious treated water leaving a facility, seven would just vanish, leaking out through cracked pipes and bleeding into the ground unseen. That's a level of inefficiency that would bankrupt any modern utility. For Jamaica, it meant that even when water was available at the source, a huge chunk of it never finished the journey. This one-two punch of geography and decay created a perfect storm, one that hit hardest during the increasingly frequent and severe droughts. The droughts of 2022 and 2023 were a brutal wake-up call. Reservoirs dipped to dangerously low levels, and the water supply to the Kingston and St. Andrew area was short by millions of gallons a day. For ordinary Jamaicans, this wasn't some abstract statistic. It was the reality of water lock-offs, of storing water in drums and buckets, of businesses cutting back hours, and of the constant uncertainty that hangs over a community when you can't count on a resource as basic as water. The social and economic costs have been immense. Unreliable water stifles development, increases health risks, and creates a fundamental inequality between those who can afford private water tanks and those who can't. It's a crisis that has held the entire nation back. It became crystal clear that small-scale fixes and patchwork repairs were like putting a band-aid on a broken leg. A problem this big required a solution just as big. Recognizing this, the Jamaican government, through its National Water Commission, NWC, and other agencies, launched one of the most significant infrastructure pushes in the nation's history. This wasn't just about plugging leaks, it was a fundamental reset, a multi-billion dollar campaign to re-engineer Jamaica's water future, with the NWC planning to invest over J$10 billion in capital expenditure for the 2025-26 fiscal year alone. So how do you solve a problem that's been generations in the making, not with small gestures? You do it with a revolution forged in steel, concrete, and sheer political will. Jamaica's answer is a suite of interconnected mega-projects, each a massive undertaking designed to work together as a new, high-performance national water grid. Let's start on the island's vibrant north coast, the engine of its tourism economy. Here, 
In the parish of St. Anne, a critical victory has already been won. The Drax Hall to Landovery Pipeline project shows exactly what this new era of investment can do. For years, the rapid growth in hotels and homes between Priory and St. Anne's Bay was putting an unbearable strain on an old, outdated system. The solution was as direct as it was effective, a J$370 million project to lay about 7.6 kilometers of new high-capacity pipeline. Commissioned in August of 2025, this project is now pumping an extra 2 million gallons of water per day into the network. That's not just a number. That's the lifeblood for new developments, security for existing resorts, and the promise of a reliable tap for thousands of residents. As Water Minister Matthew Samuda said, water is foundational to growth. This project is that philosophy in action, a targeted, powerful fix that immediately unlocked more potential in one of Jamaica's most vital economic corridors. From the North Coast, we head east to the lush parish of Portland, where another transformation is unfolding right now. For over 6,000 residents in communities from Orange Bay to Black Hill, the water supply has long been at the mercy of the weather. The answer is the Crystal Spring and Orange Bay Water Supply System, a J$658 million initiative that represents a smarter way of thinking about water security. This project isn't just about laying pipes. It's about securing a new, tougher water source that can withstand drought conditions. It's being rolled out in two strategic phases. Phase one, costing J$157 million, involves building the core infrastructure, a new water intake, powerful pumps, and a massive 150,000 gallon steel storage tank. This phased approach delivers benefits as quickly as possible while the rest of the network is built out. Phase two will follow with another J$300 million, adding more relift stations and a second 100,000 gallon tank to expand the system's reach. With construction slated to begin before the end of 2025, it's clear they're moving with urgency. When it's all done, this system will finally give the residents of Portland the modern, reliable water system they've long deserved. Now we travel south towards the capital, Kingston, and into the parish of St. Andrew. Here, the challenge isn't just distance, it's elevation. For communities nestled in the hills around Red Hills, gravity has always been the enemy. Getting water up there takes immense energy and specialized infrastructure. Infrastructure that just wasn't up to the task. This is where the Ferry to Rock Pond Pipeline project comes in. At a cost of around J$1 billion, this is one of the most ambitious and technically demanding projects in the entire program. After breaking ground in May 2025, work started on installing over 7,200 meters of heavy-duty pipeline. But the pipes are only part of the story. To defy the terrain, the project needs two powerful relift stations and two new 50 000 gallon storage tanks, essentially creating a staircase for water to climb into the hills. This project perfectly captures the economic shift happening in Jamaica. At the groundbreaking, Prime Minister Andrew Holness noted that projects like this have been on the books for decades, but the country simply couldn't afford them. The fact that this billion-dollar project is now a reality is a powerful signal of Jamaica's improved economy and a renewed political commitment to solving the toughest challenges. For the 26,000 residents who have put up with decades of water woes, the sound of construction is the sound of a promise finally being kept. And while these individual projects are impressive, the real genius is how it all connects. This is best seen in the SPARK program. SPARK, which stands for Shared Prosperity Through Accelerated Improvement to Our Road Network, is a colossal J$45 billion national infrastructure initiative. While its main focus is upgrading over 2,000 roads, it includes a brilliant J$5 billion component for water infrastructure. The philosophy is simple, but revolutionary. As crews dig up roads to resurface them, they will simultaneously lay down new water pipelines. This integrated approach, which Prime Minister Holness called a smart program, solves two problems at once. It dramatically reduces the cost and disruption of replacing water mains, and it means newly paved roads won't have to be torn up again in a few years to fix a leak. It's a move away from the siloed, patchwork approach of the past towards a systematic island-wide overhaul, 
These massive projects are about more than just concrete and steel. They're fundamentally reshaping Jamaica's social and economic landscape. These new pipelines aren't just conduits for water, they are conduits for change. First, let's talk about the economic ripple effect. For decades, the growth of Jamaica's biggest moneymaker, tourism, has been held back by water availability. The new pipeline on the North Coast is a direct shot of confidence for investors. It signals that the region can now support more hotels, attractions, and homes, creating a chain reaction of jobs and sustained growth. In the same way, the work in Portland is set to boost both its tourism appeal and its agricultural sector, especially with the new pipeline running right next to the Spring Gardens Agro Park. When water is reliable, businesses can expand, new industries can take root, and the country's whole economic engine can run a lot hotter. But maybe the most profound impact is on social equity. This wave of investment is a direct assault on the water lottery that has defined life for so many Jamaicans. In communities that have traditionally relied on catching rainwater, the promise of a piped water system is life-altering. It means kids no longer have to miss school to fetch water. It means a reduction in waterborne illnesses. It means the daily, time-consuming struggle for a basic necessity is replaced by the simple, dignified act of turning on a faucet. This is a move towards a more just society, where your access to a fundamental resource isn't determined by your zip code. This undertaking is also redrawing Jamaica's political map. In any country, delivering essential resources is a source of immense power. By spearheading this transformation, the government is making a clear statement about its priorities. The successful completion of these projects becomes a visible, undeniable symbol of progress. As Minister Matthew Samuda boldly stated, the goal is to achieve water resilience for Kingston, St. Andrew, Portmore, and Spanish Town for 2027. Setting a hard target like that turns these projects into a political promise, and delivering on it can shape public opinion for years. Finally, all of this is happening against the backdrop of climate change. Jamaica is on the front lines, facing more intense hurricanes and longer, more punishing droughts. These pipeline projects are, in essence, a national defense strategy. By creating a robust, interconnected water grid, Jamaica is future-proofing its society and economy. This is also being enhanced by smart technology. To fight the high electricity costs of pumping water uphill, the NWC is turning to renewable energy, installing solar systems at key pumping stations. This isn't just about moving water, it's about building a smarter, more resilient nation ready for the 21st century. Just when you think the scale of this transformation couldn't get any bigger, it does. While projects in the central and eastern parts of the island are moving full steam ahead, Jamaica is already launching the next, even more ambitious chapter. In July 2025, the government broke ground on the Western Resilience Water Project. This is a true megaproject by any definition. It's a staggering initiative with an overall budget of roughly J$67, $5 billion and the first phase alone costs J$28 billion, or about 176 million US dollars. The goal? To completely overhaul the water system in the critical northwestern parishes, Trelawney, St. James, Hanover, and Westmoreland, the heart of Jamaica's other major tourism corridor. This project involves laying massive new transmission pipelines and expanding or building entirely new water treatment plants. It's been declared a national strategic project, aimed at providing the water security needed to fuel the next wave of development in the West. It's a clear signal that the revolution that began in St. Anne and St. Andrew is now going fully national. This isn't just a series of isolated fixes. It's a comprehensive coast-to-coast -coast strategy to make sure no part of the island is left behind. What we're witnessing in Jamaica in 2025 is nothing short of a national reimagining. The Great Paradox, an island of water where taps run dry, is being systematically dismantled, pipe by pipe, pump by pump. This is more than the largest investment in water infrastructure in the nation's history. It's a declaration of intent. It's the story of a country taking control of its own destiny, defying its geography, and making a generational bet on itself. These arteries of steel are pumping more than just water. They're pumping life into dormant economies, opportunity into underserved communities, and a newfound resilience into the heart of the nation. 
Jamaica isn't just building pipelines. It's building a new future, one where the flow of water, wealth, and power can finally reach every corner of the island. These are just some of the mega projects reshaping Jamaica today. From water and roads to airports and new cities, the island is undergoing a massive transformation. Which one of these pipeline projects do you think will have the biggest impact? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And for more in-depth stories on the incredible infrastructure building tomorrow's world, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update.